had recently come across a list titled Seven Innovations Changing the Film Industry. And although the list covers a few different facets of filmmaking, I think it's missing some crucial elements as to what innovation really is and should be. Innovation is less about having something new, although it is a basic requirement, but more about using that something to create new value. And you'll see what I mean. Ultimately, when we ask how do we innovate in the film industry, we're really asking how do we create new value in the film industry. My main issue with the list, and many I have seen online, is that all these are technical innovations that seem to be largely focused on the film creators. But innovation at its most basic level should be about matching a value proposition to a customer segment, in this case, the audience. These lists have no focus on what brings value to the people actually paying to watch the movies. Customer focus is key in any industry. In film, it is critical to ask, how do we get an audience to watch what we create? Especially if our audience is constantly changing their preferences, wants, and needs. So to understand what I believe innovation in film is and is not, I want to explore a couple of examples. First, we will look at a modern example, the recent rise of cinematic universes in Hollywood. Then we will look at a historic example, back when film was first invented. Lastly, we will finish off by discussing how filmmakers and writers can be disruptive and find that next breakthrough. Film has actually changed a lot more than we realize in just the past 10 years. If we compare the top 10 domestic box office results from 2007 to 2017, you can clearly see new trends taking place in what audiences want to watch. In 2017, six of the top 10 movies were part of some kind of cinematic universe. In 2007, most box office hits were standalone movies or movies that were part of a linear franchise. And it really is an unprecedented culmination of a series of films interlinked together, which at the time had never been done before. The idea of the cinematic universe was made popular by Marvel, and it quickly started being replicated by others because they saw value in it. You have the Star Wars universe, the DC Extended Universe, the Lego universe, the MonsterVerse, and the list goes on. So the industry is riding this wave of cinematic universes where studios are reinventing how they build their franchises. And there is a concept in economics where innovation can be thought of largely as waves, known as Kondratiev waves. Historic patterns show that cyclical growth periods in economies are fueled by innovation, and then low periods of depression. Cinematic universes have fueled growth by bringing back repeat viewers and fans in more novel ways. These multi-dimensional narratives pique our curiosity and sense of exploration. Even better, that most are in settings of fantasy and escapism. And that is the reason I think the films turn out as well as they do is because everyone has this shared vision of the audience experience. Boom! Disney itself has experienced substantial growth in an era where digital streaming and home entertainment is becoming more and more common. Disney has been able to increase its market share year over year to nearly 30% in 2018. Whereas before 2012, the top studios would only have at most about 20% share of the market. At its current height, Disney has broken box office records with its releases of Infinity War and Black Panther, and has made the MCU the largest grossing franchise of all time. These two films fueled the 2018 box office ticket sales with projections at their highest since 2013. All of this while continually releasing fewer movies than the rest of their competition each year. The rise of cinematic universes goes to show that innovation in film isn't based in technical achievements. It's about how we experience film as a medium, as a form of recreation, as that is what provides the audience with the greatest value. Nowadays, film or motion pictures are largely a narrative medium, and the most value-driven innovations arguably revolve around finding unique ways to tell stories, as Marvel did. I want to illustrate further by looking back at the origins of film and how a significant wave of innovation transformed the industry. 
The first motion pictures ever made weren't even stories. In the 1890s, home entertainment was largely done through auditory devices such as Thomas Edison's phonograph. It wasn't until Edison wanted a visual component to accompany the phonograph that the development of a viewing device called the kinetoscope begun. Over in Europe, the Lumiere brothers also created their own motion picture projector and camera inspired by the kinetoscope called the cinematograph. But the first films that accompanied these devices were more akin to animated photographs, like the newspaper clippings you see in Harry Potter. Edison's device was largely used to capture short vaudeville acts, and the Lumiere brothers were interested in capturing what they call actualities, depictions of real life, like this clip of the train arriving at the station. These short clips had little to no narrative content. It wouldn't be until Georges Méliès that film became a medium for telling stories. His film, The Voyage to the Moon, is regarded as the world's first narrative film, albeit a very simplistic and short story in which a group of astronomers try to launch themselves to the moon. The film received international distribution and made Méliès's studio star film a success, all the while inspiring another wave of filmmakers such as Edwin S. Porter. Film became a way to tell a story, something not really thought about at the time. As I have said, value and in innovation does not come purely from new technologies or even new ideas alone. The first thing is to understand that innovation should always be focused on the adopters, the audience. If there is fit between your idea and their needs, then you understand what brings them value. Most audiences don't get value in the latest, greatest technology or techniques, but rather unique, novel, challenging, and interesting experiences. So how do we innovate the experience? How do we disrupt the status quo and find that next wave? There is not one way to do it, and I'm by no means an expert, but we can explore some techniques that have been done before. I want to take a look at this list, which is considered to be some of the world's most disruptive and valuable technology companies, and I find this list very provocative. Uber is the world's largest taxi company, but owns no taxis. Airbnb puts more heads on pillows every night, but they own no real estate. And Alibaba is one of the world's largest retailers, but owns no inventory. What does this list tell us about disruption? All these disruptions are based on digital software or technologies that already existed. Uber was found on the idea that you should be able to contact any random person on the street for a ride. The innovation didn't come from the communication technology. It came from a different application of that existing technology. We've had this technology for many years, but we're just now finding new ways to utilize them. If you look at Kevin Feige of Marvel and George Méliès, neither of them really did anything truly innovative without precedence. What Marvel accomplished could have been easily replicated nearly 20 years earlier with other studios who had property rights to an ensemble of superheroes. Kevin Feige essentially adapted the comic book crossover into film format. Crossovers were never anything new. But the innovation was when Feige adapted this in a completely different medium, the live-action superhero film. Before in film, we had franchises with sequels, but now we have multi-dimensional stories set before or after from multiple perspectives. And before we had simple crossovers as gimmicks, we now have full franchises based on these crossovers. George Méliès adapted primitive editing systems and techniques that were used to weave short films together into viewing programs, but instead, his clips followed a logical narrative progression. In both examples, there was the basis of applying something that was already there differently, which allowed them to create something entirely novel for audiences. So take a look at old film tropes and try applying things differently. Try to find new ways to explore things that are familiar try to reframe the film experience differently. Nothing is ever truly original. So what's the next big thing? It's probably already here, and you don't even know it. Thank you. Hey everyone, thank you for tuning in and sticking till the end. I thought I'd do something interesting this time as well. I have 
somewhat of a background in entrepreneurship and innovation, and I thought it would be interesting to look at film and storytelling from this perspective. So what are your thoughts? What's the future of filmmaking and viewing? Comment below. See you next time.